Are you okay? I guess. Thanks for the help. Were those the... what do you call them? The Taken? What are they? It's complicated. Short version, the darkness can take people over. That's why I had to destroy the oil derrick. Otherwise, they would have overrun the place. Wow, I didn't think you'd actually do it. I mean, I didn't think it'd work. That's crazy. Let me just try one more time at the risk of sounding like a broken record. It's bad out there. I don't want you hurt. You should stay put. Yeah, while well, you turn this place into an inferno, run around shooting things up and play some kind of weird games with your psycho evil twin. Don't get me wrong, you're, you're nice for a weirdo. I'm impressed as hell by all of this, but enough is enough. I seriously just want to get out of here, okay? Poltergeist. Its existence is one of rage and hostility, and its very presence turns ordinary objects into deadly projectiles. Oh, shit! The strands of webbing glistened in the beam of my flashlight, fine, almost ethereal. They were fresh and right in my path. I held my breath and waited, ear straining. Nothing. I moved on, concentrating on the task at hand. Just get what I was looking for, then leave. That's all I keep telling myself. For a moment, I actually thought it might be as simple as that. Then, I heard too many legs skittering across the ground. The scene, traces of violence, a callous midnight snack, a room key left carelessly behind. The man recognizes the enemy's handiwork. I think these are keys for the motel rooms. Emma Sloan was a believer in a great many things, most of which were entirely fallacious. Emma Sloan, an innocent victim of his dark half, more collateral damage in the ongoing war, damned by forces beyond her control, as much as by her own actions.
Damn it! Why didn't you listen? My own face peered back at me from the TV screen. For a moment, I struggled with the sensation of deja vu. How many times have I seen myself like this now? And then there was that easy grin that never seemed quite as quick or natural on my own lips. The dark, malicious twinkle in the eyes. And I knew who I was looking at. As he pulled back and revealed the room behind him, my throat went dry. There was nothing I could do but watch. Michael Farabee, dead, tortured, dressed in clothes that bore the name of a local observatory. A slim lead, but solid enough. It stirs something deep in his mind. He knows where to go now. The observatory, hot on the heels of the Herald of Darkness, the Champion of Light forges on to see the stars. An observatory, a place for a man to witness the magnificence of the universe. But such insights are not what the Champion of Light is looking for. He has come to find a weapon. As you know, I'm Eddie Rodman, and I'm still talking to old gods of Asgard, who are doing their big comeback tour. How's that been going for you? Odin? Splendid! I'm having the time of my life! You know, I didn't realize how much I'd miss that. And what about you, Tor? Ah, it's okay, you know. Well, this must bring back a lot of memories. Oh, yeah! It's wonderful to be back on stage. If it wasn't for my knee, <laughs> I'd feel like a young man again. <laughs> well, speaking of that, I hate to keep harping on this age thing, but I gotta tell you, I've heard your new songs, guys, and you sound really good. Thank you. And uh, this may be a touchy subject, but to be blunt, you really don't sound, uh, well, old. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, the difference between your, your speaking voice and your singing voice, it's pretty striking. What the hell are you talking about? You saying it's not us singing on that record? What? What's he talking about? No, 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 I'm not saying that, guys, but I, I can't help noticing the difference. Son, you're on thin ice. You calling me a liar? Whoa, hey, let me just step in here for a moment, boys. Yeah, Eddie, they do sound different, but believe me, we're not talking Millie Vanilli here. These guys are the real deal. Why don't you come to the gig tomorrow night and see for yourself? Once they get on that stage, boom, things get real. Real? Believe me, they play like they're possessed. It's almost like magic. Look, you see my boys play, you see the old gods for real. These guys project a lot of power. They're not lightweights, you know what I'm saying? All right, Barry, I'll, I'll see if I can make it. Now, let's take another quick break here, and after that, we'll play the new Old Gods of Asgard single. Don't you go away.
As a storyteller, my first real love was crime. And it was in that genre that I finished my first novel, starring the perpetually miserable Alex Casey, whose entire life was a wound that never healed. The books sold as fast as they hit the shelves. I wrote five more Alex Casey books, and they all were bestsellers. I became rich. I became famous. Success brought pressure, and I didn't handle it very well. I've carried a flashlight and a gun for so long that I feel naked without either. It's all too often that I need them. The darkness protects the taken. Shadows crawl over their forms like living things, protecting them from harm. Blows that would injure or kill a human outright mean nothing to them as long as the darkness persists. But light makes them vulnerable. Light burns the shadows away. The darkness that drives them is still in them, but now they're vulnerable. Flashlight and gun. Sometimes it feels they're all I have left. The spiders aren't really the work of the enemy. They're a side effect, a part of the dark place's less significant fauna that has managed to slip through the opening I made when I arrived. Less an animal than an idea that has assumed the form of an animal. Makes them no less dangerous, but at least they're a little easier to deal with. The darkness doesn't protect them like the Taken, and thus they can be destroyed by either light or bullets right away.
I've seen the enemy, and it's me. I faced dark horrors before, things that live in the unimaginable pressures of the world beyond our own. Sometimes they masquerade as humans. That's what ultimately lurks inside Mr. Scrooge. He's every mean-spirited tabloid story about me, an evil caricature, a creature formed in that vague territory of misconceptions, half-truths, and the dark imagination of people who heard a story about me. An urban legend made flesh, a serial killer, my dark half, brought to life by the power of Cauldron Lake. The pressure of success got to me. My wife, Alice, was the sole thing in my life that anchored me. Suddenly it wasn't enough. I couldn't write anymore. I distracted myself with wild parties and whatever trouble I could scare up. I wallowed in the drama of my life, sure that Alice would stick with me even though she didn't sign up to be the lifeline of a tortured artist. It was my dumb luck she's not the type to give up. Rachel Meadows and wait a moment it's you I can't believe you dare show your face around here again wasn't me. I just look like him. Are you serious? That's what you're going with? Please. I'm trying to stop him. You saw those shadow things trying to kill me, right? I bet he got along with them just fine. Yes. Yes, he did. All right. Come on in. Thank you. Hey, buddy. I figured I'd take a moment to talk to you. There's a party next door. I'm feeling pretty good right now. A little beer, a little fun, you know? It's nice. Listen, this whole thing between us, it's a little weird for me too, you know? I mean, we don't just look the same, there's a lot we share. I mean, up here. I know you, right? So I was thinking maybe we could... These guys are getting out of control. We're both victims of circumstance here. And maybe we could make some kind of effort to...
Never mind. Just a moment, I'll send the lift down to you. I didn't expect to see anyone here tonight, but I'm relieved to see an actual person. That's assuming this isn't some kind of cruel trick on your part, of course. Doctor, the man who looked like me, what did he want here? There's a strange astronomical event happening right now, something I can't begin to classify, but I think it's disabled our satellite. There's a very peculiar signal that we're receiving. A signal? That's what I'm here for. Well, so was he, but he didn't seem to understand it at all. He got very angry, sabotaged our imaging array, and now we're blind. I believe the event is still going on, but we can't pick it up. Is there something we can do? What he broke is essentially just a special camera, but we can't use the telescope without it. There's a replacement in my car. If you can get that to me, we're back in business. Consider it done. Tell me more about the signal. It's almost as if something's being transmitted to Night Springs. It's the strangest thing. It's quite elusive, almost as if it wasn't properly there. I don't know how to describe it. So, what was the signal like? I wish I knew. He appeared before I had a good fix on it. He was very pleasant when I was working, but when I isolated the signal, he suddenly forced me out of the control booth. He said it was none of my business. He seemed to... to change. Somehow, he... he was very smooth and charming before that, but suddenly he became... I'm sorry. I'm not sure I want to talk about it. I have to ask. Do you always wear that to work? I was at a party for a local art exhibition. Fascinating works. When I was called away by my assistant, Michael was the first to spot this event. I don't know where he is now, actually. He was supposed to bring us some food, but he never showed up. Tell me about the event. Oh, it's quite fascinating. It looks as if stars were changing, somehow, or shifting positions. It isn't really happening, of course, most likely it's caused by some kind of atmospheric refraction phenomenon, but I've never seen anything like it. Did he hurt you? No. He didn't quite threaten me exactly, but those shadowy things started to crawl into view, and whatever the signal was, he seemed to be extremely frustrated by it. He just started breaking things and left. I thought it best not to interfere. You were lucky. He's done much worse. Yes. He showed me a knife. And he kept talking. He enjoyed the sound of his own voice. A proper maniac. You really aren't anything like him, are you? Believe me, I try very hard not to be. Try to be careful. It's a very expensive part, and we don't have a replacement. Oh dear, that sounded more callous than I intended. Ah, uh, uh, be safe.
This must be her car. Found it! Excellent. I'll operate the platform directly below the telescope so you can install the array. Don't worry, it's very easy. What? Well, you could go and open the secondary coolant flow valves manually. I know it's dangerous there, but, well... I got it! Please come talk to me if you have questions. Just remember, you need to release all three valves. It doesn't matter what order you do it in. 